Open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. This, I think, is the fourth or fifth message on the subject matter, did Jesus, or was Jesus, born September 11th, 3 B.C. This is, like I said, the fourth or fifth message, I'm not sure. I know I preached my 800th message last Sunday night, and this is 801. About two-thirds of those messages are on the video archives, and some are in a written format. If you're new, you, you missed quite a bit of information on different subject matters related to the Bible and the Scriptures. You have a lot to catch up on. Now, I'm not going to go back to it. I thought I would, and I would continue it. But I'm going to say it for a different time because in this section of the last day series on this particular date, 11, September 11, 3 B.C., I started laying down some information why I believe Jesus Christ was born September 11, 3 B.C. The last time we gathered, and I, I think it was last Wednesday night, and I preached on the seven-branch menorah, at least I stood second message on it. Go to the board real quick. I'm not going to go any further at this time because the seven-branch menorah has several different meanings that must be applied to it. And one of those was each one of these branches represents an age or a thousand years. I mean, that's nothing I created. That is as old as the sun itself. That's you one. Even older, to tell you the truth. Information you can find anywhere. And of, and of course, in the fourth age, or the 4,000 years, Jesus Christ arrived on the scene, being the light of God. And don't confuse this, by the way, with the nine-branch menorah. That's a Hanukkah. And Hanukkah was not one of the original feasts God said to observe in the Old Testament. And we covered the almond flowers, the bud and blossoms, and there were seven completion perfection last time. I'm not going to do that this time. I was going to take us and give you other meanings to the seven branch menorah, at least one other, but I'm going to reserve that for a different time because I want to move forward on this particular teaching that stays focused on the September 11, 3 BC date. So that takes us back again to Revelation. Chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Now I had you circle the word wonder there. The Greek is not wonder, it's sign. So there appeared a great sign in heaven. Not here on earth, but in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. And the moon under her feet. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Jump over to verse 5. We'll come back to verse 3 and 4 in another time. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, as I said in the first, I believe the first message on this particular subject, I said what John is describing there is the constellation Virgo, or the Virgin. So, when we, as biblical detectives, investigated when at that time, around supposedly when Jesus was born, when did this constellation appear? I mean, within this uh, sign in the constellation, this sign in heaven appear in Israel, clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. 
Well, what happened? September 11th, 3 BC, around 6.18 p.m. to about 7.39 p.m. This happened to occur, by the way, at the beginning of the Feast of the Trumpets, which is on the first day of the seventh month on the Hebrew calendar. You got it? So, and there appeared a great sign in heaven. And that sign was a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, Virgo. Now, these signs are significant that we find in the heavens. And it's full of meaning. This particular date, September 11, 3 BC, saw the dawning of a new moon on the first day of the month, as I said, on the Jewish calendar. It was Rosh Hashanah, or the Feast of the Trumpets. Rosh Hashanah, or the Feast of the Trumpets. And that particular day, they would blow on the shofar, it's a ram's horn, that the Jews fashion into a trumpet-like instrument used for these particular purposes, religious purposes. Now on this date, to the T, this sign in heaven, that clearly, clearly identify what the sign is, that's Virgo, happened to appear on September 11th, 3 BC, which is described right here in the book of Revelation. Now, this woman, Miriam or Mary, was the mother of Jesus. And she is what's depicted here in the sign of Virgo. Exactly as it appears on September 11th, 3 BC. Now there appeared a great sign in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, number one, you can write this down, Virgo must be clothed with the sun. Close doesn't cut it. Virgo must be clothed with the sun for the purpose to clothe her with light. So the sun should be in Virgo's proximate torso area. Now, it also says the moon must be also under her feet. Which, by the way, on September 11, 3 BC, that's exactly where it was. I have a stick type of picture because when you look at these constellations and they have flowy pictures. But to make the point, you'll see a stick person-like drawing, which they'll put up as soon as they have it ready on the screen, and I'll point that out to you. 
There's Virgo. Now, this ain't the flowy kind of looking constellations, I mean, the signs and the constellations. It's part of the zodiac that you normally see. And I showed you the, a map of that in the first. What happened there? I lost my picture. Put my picture back up there. I don't want to see ocean right now. There you go. I show you those, the, the, the charts. I think it was the first message that show you all the wonderful drawings in the constellations that really paints a wonderful picture of what the gospel stars mean. But I want you to get a good idea of what this constellation is depicting. So you hear a stick figure here to make the point. Now you see the woman in the center to the middle bottom of that picture is Virgo. You see the sun? It's in her kind of torso area on September 11th, 3 BC. Now, the moon on September 11th, 3 BC, check out what that is. What does the scripture say? And the moon under her feet. Now, you keep it on that picture for a minute. But it also mentions upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now, there's always been a crown or a garland of 12 stars that are distinct around the star Savi Java. which many consider to be the star marking Virgo's head. You see it right there. If you look at the cap-like drawing on Virgo's head, on the Sarvi Java, there's 12 distinct stars. Now, some consider these stars around Sarvi Java may actually be too faint to be even considered their to be that remarkable crown of 12 stars crowning this woman which is clothed with the sun. So there you see the Savi Java, which just keep that in mind for now. You see the sun, and the sun is in the center of Virgo, which would illuminate above and below her whole body, and obviously the new moon under her feet which, now this ain't exactly to scale, but it gives you a close enough picture of what, we're trying to, what I'm trying to portray to you tonight. Now, like I said, some don't believe Savi Java is that remarkable of a star structure to be considered. But they have another option. If you go further to the top of this picture is when we see Leo as it appears with Jupiter on Regulus. And guess when that happens? Also, on September of 3000 BC. Could this possibly, you have two options in this case. Could this be the garland or crown of 12 stars that was envisioned around the woman's head, which we just read here in Revelation chapter 12, verse 1? Now, some believe it be true because Jupiter represents the Messiah, king of Israel. Now, I'm not expecting to know all this information. Most don't even dare preach on this stuff. It's confusing. So they stay away from it. But you could take my word for it. I think I've been proven reliable. You could research it yourself. Could be Sabi Java, or it could be Regulus. Like I said, especially since Jupiter represents the Messiah, King of Israel. And the star Regulus 
is often said, by the way, to be prominent in the heavens of the day of great kings are born. Now the fact is, there are 11 fairly prominent stars marking the sign of Leo. And if you keep looking, and Jupiter and Regulus can be seen then as the 12th star. And what makes this day of the trumpets in 3 BC even more significant than any other in the history of time is what occurred on Yom Kippur or Day of Atonement on September 21st, 3 BC and on the first day of the week-long Feast of Sukkot or Tabernacles on September 26, 3 BC, while G G Jupiter was still very near to Regulus. Now, why am I stressing this? Because it's an important point. You have two possibilities, but one is really crucial, and that is the star Regulus, also known as Regal, R-E-G-E-L. in conjunction with the Messiah planet Jupiter at the time of Christ's birth. Why? Because Regal's, Regal marks one of the Leo, the lion's front paw. I don't know if I have a map of it. I don't know if this will show it. It doesn't come up really good in the screen, but let me see if I have it here. Let's see. I'll just show it to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the camera too. Maybe you can pick it up. Here is. this is going to pick it up or not doesn't really can't see it that well and this is not exactly to scale but it's close enough what I was just referring to is Regulus is right there and here's his front paw and what is his front paw on the Crooked Serpent. And I'll have more to say about that either tonight or in a future program. Now, put it back up in a stick figure. Why this is a crucial point is because Regal, like I said, marks one of Leo's the lion's front paws. You don't see it really there in that drawing. And by the way, the regal is, the, is also named the foot that crushes in the constellation of Orion's foot. I need to get a map so I can really lay all this stuff out so I can show you what exactly I'm saying. So is it a coincidence that the star named regal, the one that foot crushes, a coincidence? Now, Orion, which, by the way, is in the constellation of Orion. Remember, Orion and Leo both represent Christ in his role as a conquering king. And by the way, I never taught on this, but Orion is tied to the entire Great Pyramid Complex and the Great Sphinx. 
that serves as symbols also for Christ. Now, outside of all that, the thing I want to stress to you tonight is what Revelation 12, 1 is referring to. It's referring to what you see there in the diagram on the screen. Virgo. She's clothed with the sun. The moon is at her feet. And either Sabi Java or Regulus or Regal is whatever pin you have on that, what you want to believe. Either one could fit, to tell you the truth. I believe, personally, the reason why you have two possible head of a crown of 12 stars, because he was a king in his first coming, and he's going to be a conquering king, which is stated in the constellation of, constellation of Leo in his second coming. Now, that's, that's just based on personal opinion, what I think, why we find two sets of 11. So, now, most translations of Revelation 12, 1, says that the garland or crown of the woman was upon her head. But go to the scripture now. The word is, I'll just write it here, epi. Translated above, can be translated upon, but also can be translated over. I believe it's translated above or over. Either above or over. Now the King James decided to use upon. I'm not too sure the King James translators even had a clue of what all the zodiac, the constellations in the heavens, the signs, even meant back then. But the thing is, it also be translated above or over. So it probably means above or over in this case. You got it? So then, The interpretation of seeing, for instance, what I just mentioned to you, Leo, the kingly lion, with Jupiter as the crown of 12 stars over Virgo's head. Is this not possible? Or more likely true than the first option? But I believe. I believe there's a possibility of two options. Whether I'm right or wrong is not even the point. The point is, if I had to choose one, I would choose the second option, which would be, be found in Leo the kingly lion with Jupiter. Put up the stick figure again. Which you'll see on the screen and here in a second, the diagram of what I'm referring to up there where it says Leo, Jupiter, around that area in Regulus, that'd be the crown. So, two options. I think, not two options by accident, but two options nevertheless. Now, in addition, 
to what we read in Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, in the sign in heaven, which is telling us this is Virgo, on September 11, 3 B.C., there are other heavenly signs that seem to verify this date. To verify his birth date. One example is the planet Venus. Which by definition is the reflected light of Yahweh or Christ or the light of the world which we saw as one of the meanings in the menorah on the fourth age or the four thousand years when Christ came on the scene because he was the light of God in this planet planet Venus was reflecting the light of God through Jesus, the morning star, on Virgo's face, which suggests that Mary was shining from within with the true light of the world. Which was none other than the Son of God, Jesus Christ, in her womb. And that's not all. You take Mercury. It's called God's scribe planet, S-C-R-I-B-E, that records his will and his word, which was in Virgo's breast, which shows that Mary herself then was filled with the true Word of God, who is the Son of God, in her womb, as depicted by the sun in her torso area. As you see, put it up one more last time on the screen. Hopefully I wrote that in there. Yes, you can. You see? right around the breast area, Mercury. Just above that, Venus, as I suggested. The reflected light of Christ. Now, this is what it looked like on September 11, 3 BC. Was that just a coincidence? How did it all lined up perfectly and why did John, who was writing what he was told to write, even mention something like this if we were not to understand what he was referring to? Because he says, right from verse 1, and there appeared a great sign in heaven, not sign on earth or anywhere else. The sign is in heaven. So we have to look up to the heavens to try to figure out what John is saying. And she being with crowd, child travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. I don't think it's a coincidence, but I'm not through. There's more. There's plenty more. I'm not sure I'm going to go through all those details, but I'll give you enough, hopefully to convince you that this September 11th date, 3 BC, is when Christ was born. As I said a few times before, it's been a stone in this insane shoe ever since. 
He knows what the day was. He dreaded the day because he knew it was the beginning of the end for him. Because Christ would come out of that tomb and he would have victory over death and the grave. And because he had victory, we are promised the same victory if we trust and faith in him. The more you dig into God's word as, biblical, as a biblical detective, I can't see how you wouldn't trust each and every day more and more what God's word not only declared in his book, in the scriptures, but in the heavens and in the creation. I really haven't gotten to that yet. But hopefully in the future I will. Now, I'm tempted to go on further tonight, but I think I'm going to stop there. Let you absorb all that information and let it sink in before I move on to additional information. Now, let me know if you got it so far in this search for the truth concerning Christ's birthday and know he was not born in Christmas. Now, December 25th has an important meaning to it, but not what you think and definitely not what Christ, not because Christ was born on that day because he wasn't. And God willing, I'll have time to talk about this December 25th, which nobody does. They're keeping the truth hidden from you. The few that knew, knew about it don't dare even challenge the rest of the Christian world because they'll be considered apostates. Well, they're the apostates. As I preached the message not too long ago, titled Up Theirs, that's exactly how I feel. We'll keep preaching the rightly divided word of God as the Greek clearly defines it making the word cut straight. And that's exactly what I plan to do. Now let me know if you got that. Play a song. 